Hey there gang, I think we're getting down to the wire here. At least it feels that way. Looking at this old nut here, it's kind of, I don't know, it's very thin looking for this style of guitar. It's almost a little stingy. And I could probably make it work. It's probably too low at this point, so I'd have to shim it up. But, you know, if we're going to do it, might as well go all the way. So I'm making a new one, and it's slightly wider. Um, the original one is just over uh, 4 millimeters, 160 thousandths in width. This one's about 185, which I think just looks more normal on this style of guitar. So that's what I'm going to use. Feels like I've shown how I do this a lot lately. Flattening the face, the one that contacts the fingerboard, checking it, that's pretty good. Just going to mark that, got a block here that's cut at right angles, I'll put the face against that block, and we'll sand the bottom so that it's at right angle, I'll check that. That seems pretty good. Cleaning out any remnants of glue. Making sure the bottom of the channel is flat. I'm just checking to see how flush we are, and that's pretty good. There's just enough on there to sand off with 220, 400, 600 paper, and then we'll be right on the money. I think there's some debate as to when you should cut the nut to width. Um, the theory being that if you were slightly off in your spacing, you could shift it laterally to make up for that and then cut it flush. But to my mind, if you're that far off in your calculations, you're probably going to end up having to cut a new nut anyway. So I like to bring it to final dimensions now before I do the slotting. I've got my half pencil here. This is a blurry shot of me using a disc sander to refine the shape and bring it down just over the pencil line. Marking the outside string spacing. Using a caliper to mark out the divisions for the other strings. I'll go ahead and score those lines in with a scalpel. And I'll reinforce that with a razor saw. Here I'm just removing some of the bulk of the waste from the back side of the nut. That'll get it out of the way of my fret slotting files. I'll do the bulk of the filing while the nut is still off the guitar. I'll go ahead and lightly glue the nut on so I can string it up for the neck jig. We're left with this spot on the back here that is open and is missing a little bit of material right on the edge. I need to fix that up. Now luckily I happen to have a piece of mahogany that's approximately the right vintage. And I think that'll fit in there just nicely. First things first, I want to glue up the loose portion of the seam before I try to patch in some new wood. So I'm going to clean that out with some sandpaper. Make sure I get a good glue bond. I'm injecting some hot hide glue in here. Get a good lake of it in there and then clamp it up. Have to be quick with hide glue. I've only got about a minute to get the clamps on. This neck has definitely seen better days. It was obviously stored without a case and has been leaned up against any number of tables, chairs, or other sharp bright angles over the years. So there's a um, patina over the entire surface that's kind of mottled. There's also a couple of really egregious gouges on it though. This one here seems relatively fresh. This one is old. It's pretty deep but it's also got a bunch of accumulated grunge in it which kind of softens the outline a little bit. Definitely have to fill those and I think I'm gonna lightly sand the entire back of this neck just to try to make it feel a little smoother. I mean, there's nothing wrong with sanding all the finish off the neck. Some people actually like that feeling. Other people with really greasy hands hate it because they develop a, a layer of something that feels like peanut butter on there. 
that's already feeling a little better. This is just 600 grit sandpaper and I'm using very, very little pressure. Just sort of skating over the, the bad spots. I'm doing super glue drop fills on the worst of the dings. This will take several coats, some of these. Oh, I'm a little annoyed with myself. I hit record and the camera ran out of room on its SD card before I was finished with the operation. Anyway, what I've done here is I taped my ruler to the spot where I want it to be. So it just gives me added insurance. And then I took uh, a brand new scalpel blade and striving to maintain perpendicularity with the uh, plane of the top, I cut down through the broken section of the top. After that, I took this. This is a safe edge file. And using the safe edge against the ruler, filed down through the remnants of the top and the hide glue, exposing the lining and the joint with the side. I've got a piece of wood here. This is the mahogany and I can move that backwards and forwards and figure out where it matches best with the grain. It's more important when you're dealing with rosewood backs, but in this case, mahogany is pretty similar all the way through. And um, that's a good clean joint. I can, you know, glue that up with no problem. I'm going to mark around it and uh, cut off some of the excess. I like a protein-based glue for this kind of crack work, um, either hide glue or fish glue. As they cure, these ones seem to um, contract a bit. They pull the parts together even tighter uh, in a way that the polyvinyl glues don't seem to do. So you end up with a really tight looking glue seam. It hides it better. It seems to disappear more. So get them in place there. Give them a bit of a rub. And I'm just going to, as if I was binding a guitar, place pressure on the corner and then pull things in together. That's probably sufficient, but if I want, I can go ahead and put on a spool clamp or two just to make sure. Okay, it's the next day, and this is good and dry. I put a piece of tape here. It's actually a double thickness. So I'm going to plane it off. Mahogany is a funny wood when it comes to planing. Like it actually planes easily, but at the same time, it's difficult to get a really good surface because of its interlocking grain. Just the nature of the grain itself means you're almost always planing against the grain at some point. So I've set my plane for a very fine cut and I've closed up the mouth on the throat here. So there's less chance for an errant uh, piece of grain to sort of tear out ahead of the cut. I know I'm there because it just started planing into the top layer of tape. To true up the outline, I can use a little spoke shave. Or a scraper will work as well. Depending on the wood, sometimes a file works well too. Now I'm just trying to duplicate the bevel on here. difficult to know because this edge is pretty chewed up, but that should be a good enough approximation. And we can sand it lightly with some 220 grit paper. This is a little bit of amber shellac. I'm just going to seal the wood up. Trying to blend in. I'm going to use the same stuff on a couple of really raw looking spots here on the side of the headstock. I'm not trying to make this stuff go away, just take off a little bit of the newness. The amber shellac is quite orange even more orange than orange shellac. The strap button had broken off at some point in the pass, so I decided to drill that out and I'm going to plug it 
using this 3 8 inch tapered plug cutter. Makes a very snug fit for the plug. In this mahogany here, I just crack it off. Out comes this nice little tapered plug. And very carefully pare down the plug after it's been glued so that it's flush with the surface. And install the new button. At this point I decided to level off those super glue drop fills on the dings in the back of the neck. And I was, you know, trying it out a number of times, kept feeling it and seeing whether I could let it go. But at the end of the day, it was just too gnarly. The neck felt too chewed up. Some people are sensitive to these things. Other people can let them go. I guess I'm sensitive because I decided I was just going to sand right through. You can see what it looks like there. All of those little things, I find them very distracting. So I went back and I sanded all the way down to bare wood just along the neck shaft. I'm applying some aniline dye, a color I mixed up. I'm using alcohol as the vehicle rather than water. I didn't want to put a whole bunch of water into the neck at this point. And as for the color, I wasn't too exacting. I just didn't want it to look like raw poplar. <laughs> so I'm back on the neck jig here, leveling the tops of the frets. They went in pretty level. There wasn't very much to do. Recrowning. I'm using a three corner file, which I like for instances like this when there's not too much to take off. Just rounding over that little flat spot left over from the sanding beam. I'm going to polish up the frets and make them shiny. I'm going to spend some time rounding over the fret ends. After this, I sanded and buffed them too. It's always nice to put some oil on that freshly sanded surface and bring out the true beauty of the wood. This is tongue oil. You could use boiled linseed oil if you want it to smell bad for several years. That's fine. You can do that. Well, gang, I really wanted to finish this up in one long video for you, but a number of unexpected things have conspired against me. Uh, it's been a really long, busy week in my non luthery life, and we even had a death in the family the other day. Um, but for this guitar, I wanted to install a pick guard, and I had a look at my stash of tortoiseshell plastic, and it turns out I had nothing even remotely the right size. So I've had some of that on order for a few days now. And as you can imagine, guitar supplies are way down the list when it comes to shipping priorities. So we'll see how that goes. The other thing is, the other night when I strung this up to put it on the neck jig for fret dressing, everything was going fine until I got to the third string here. I turn it, and at some point in the rotation, things start to get very snug. And then pop. That ain't right. Let's try it again. Yeah, not good. So I thought that, you know, maybe the holes are a little bit off. So I'm measuring from post to post here. And no, they seem to be just right about, you know, 35 millimeters uh, from hole to hole, which is what I expect them to be, one and three eighths of an inch. Um, so there must be something going on with the gear inside there or maybe the hole is canted a bit. Now I reamed it out and there should be plenty of space, you know, within these um, bushings. Although that one might be a little snugger than the others. We'll see. No, that seems about right. So I'm going to take this off. We'll see if we can figure out what's going on with that. I thought, you know, maybe it's possible that hole is off just enough that the upper post here is being pushed away from the gear and it's binding and not meshing correctly. So I went back and remeasured again and checked the angle. I thought eh, it could be like a half millimeter maybe. So I decided to use the reamer and try to influence it a little bit and see if that helped. And uh, I strung it back up and it was still having the same problem. So, you know, it did not seem to be in the hole. And so just to satisfy my mind, I decided to plug that hole and redrill it, make sure that it wasn't the hole. And it wasn't. I'll tell you, the other thing it could be is if the gear is loose on the post, as if the screw hadn't been tightened up enough, that could also cause binding. This is very difficult to film in such a way that you can see it. But there are two bent over tabs that hold the cover plate onto here. I'm going to try to get those off. 
So I snugged everything up, tested it out, put it back on the guitar, got the same result. So I'm done with it. Uh, I'm going to get a new set of tuners. I'll never get a refund for these because I've had them for about a year and a half. Just the way it goes sometimes. Well, I think we should probably put a bit of a shine on this neck here. I could go and shoot some lacquer on it, and I still might, depending on how this works out. But I, I think I want to try and experiment with a finish I've never used before. Seems like a good opportunity. I'm going to try out a mix I read about last year in Federico Shepard's Eulogy of Robert Ruck in the Guild of American Luthiers journal. Um, Robert Ruck was an enormously revered American classical guitar builder. Very prolific guy, made a lot of guitars, really interesting individual. Um, Federico went to his shop at some point to pick his brain and he got some tips and this finish was one of them. Uh, apparently Ruck used this on his classical tops and I mean I believe he used a commercial urethane spar varnish for the backs and sides but this is um, it's more like a padding lacquer it's four parts of shellac and this will really blow your mind if you're a classical maker this will just drive you nuts he used Zinsser's bullseye shellac right out of the hardware store you know the canned stuff today you would be seen as crazy to do that like no one would do that but you got to remember in the 60s if you were just teaching yourself how to build guitars there just wasn't the kind of resources available I mean, where are you going to find de-waxed shellac flakes without the internet? So, you know, you go to the hardware store, you got what you got, and you made it work. So he would mix four parts of shellac to two parts of nitrocellulose lacquer. And that gives you something of the properties of both. Uh, you can pat it on, which is really difficult to do with lacquer. Uh, even brushing lacquer, is it's a mess. It's very difficult. Um, but it builds faster, and it's a tougher finish than just straight shellac. At Lee Valley, um, years ago, we used to sell a pre-mixed liquid product. Uh, we called it French Polish, in parentheses, padding lacquer, which I think was really just a rebranded version of Balin's Qualisol finish, which is another padding lacquer. It's pretty well known. I think they even discontinued that sometime in the last few years. I don't think you can buy that anymore. But um, it was pretty good stuff. Problem was no one really knew how to use it, and no one really wanted to buy it, so it was hard to sell. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mix it up here. I'm going to do this by weight rather than volume. Nasty stuff. Okay, four grams of that. And I'm using a two pound cut of amber here. I'm going to fix up my polishing pad, also known as a fad if you're English, or a tampon if you're French. I've got some cotton batten, and uh, I can use a little pipette to feed some of the finish into that. And that gets tightly wrapped up in a cloth covering. Linen is really good if you can get it, like an old well laundered linen napkin or something. Tighten that up, and if you tap it and press, the finish starts to bleed through the outer covering. And that's what I use to French polish with. French polishing as a subject is really difficult to teach via video because it's so much about feel. Um, it's You'd probably be better to read a book about the subject, to be honest, in this case. There are people who try to do videos about it, and you know I don't know how you would teach it without having someone actually feel and see what's going on. Um, it's full of esoteric information um, and not easy to learn. It takes a long time to develop the touch. I'm going to put on my respirator now because the fumes from this are pretty nasty. Applying the first coat of finish here. I really like this stuff. It handles beautifully. It's going on great. So I will continue doing this over the next few days and build up the surface. And in the interim, I've got a couple of really fun little guitars that have shown up, which I'll make videos about this week, and that'll keep you occupied. Um, I'll finish this one whenever the mailman lets me do it. You know, that's the best I can offer. So thank you for watching. Oh, yeah, the four of you who want to email me every single day, and in one case, twice a day, saying that you're still waiting for the next part in this project, you probably don't need to do that. Now, I know you're lonely right now, but I'm not the guy you should be asking for a hug, because you probably wouldn't like the one I have to give you. All right, guys. Take care. See you soon.